Let's talk today about this Netgear Pro Safe Switch. It has eight ports, four of them are PoE ports, and four of them are regular ports. I have here the first port connected to my computer, and this one is connected to a camera, okay? So the cable is leaving here the first port and arrives here at my camera. This is a PTZ camera, and it has different movements. It can move in the horizontal, in the vertical, and also move the lens to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so basically instead of using a power supply, I'm using the cable to bring power to the camera. That's the PoE or power over ethernet, right? Back here to the switch. As you can see, there are some LEDs to indicate activity, right? Here, for example, it's indicating that it's connected to the camera, it's powering the camera, and also it's transmitting data. And here I also have activity uh, from my computer. Here is just an indication of power, okay? And uh, you have also here on the back, a connection for the power supply. Pretty simple, okay? You can use the switch just to power your device, cameras or also phones, everything that needs PoE. And you can also manage the switch. As you can see here, for example, I have on the screen the image from my camera, okay? I'm powering the camera with the PoE and I can, even move the camera when I click here with the mouse. Can move the camera to different positions. Okay, so basically on horizontal, vertical movement. And I can zoom in and zoom out. Here we go. So basically it's necessary to have power coming from the switch. That's enough to move the motor there in the camera. And I can use this software to manage the switch. This one is to find the camera in the network, right? So here I have my computer connected to the switch and it's in the same IP range of the switch. The software it broadcasts the information the network and finds my switch. So I can click here and go to admin page. Let me just insert here my password that I created before. Here we go. Log into the web page. So here, basic information about the switch. You have product name, serial number, MAC address, everything you need to know about your switch. Port status, here we go. You have port number one to eight. Here have the port number one up and number eight up because I have the cable connected there. I can select the port, change here the speed from auto to disable, 10 megabits per second half duplex or full duplex, and also 100 and 1000 megabits per second half and full duplex as well. I can enable or disable for full control and I can do this for more than one port at the same time, okay? So basically controlling the ports, loop detection. So it's disabled, I can enable. So if I, I do something with my switch, let's say for example, I have a loop between port number one and number two. I mistakenly put some cable somewhere on the network and then I have a loop here. It can detect to prevent that uh, my network goes down, can disable one of the ports, right? And also I can check here on switch management mode. I can man management the switch via web browser or using the IP utility. Also here, there's a maintenance part. You can change your password, reboot your device, uh, send the, uh, switch to the default settings, firmware update, save the configuration and restore configuration, okay? Later monitoring, you can see the receiving data, bytes received, bytes sent, and also check the CRC error. Mirroring, you can mirror the, the ports. Let's say, for example, you wanna mirror the port number one to port number two, you can enable here and start in mirroring all the, the ports that you want to. So you can, for example, test and uh, see packets that are coming from the ports, right? Into the different ports. Cable tester, you can test cable here. So from one to eight, pretty simple as well. And multicast, I use this on CCTV projects sometimes, right? You can enable IGMP snooping. Now also VLAN ID for IGMP, validate IGMP version three, block and no multicast address. So pretty useful if you're using uh, which cast in, in your project. Later you have here the VLAN menu. So you have the basic port VLAN status, it's disabled, you can enable, and you have advanced features here so you can uh, 
enable the ports with the villains. It comes with the villain one, which is an universal villain ID, right? Every single switch has this villain one by default. And here you can have the port members. You can create different villains here and assign the members. And you can also assign the group operation. And then you come to 802.1Q. So you can also enable and disable this protocol and use it based on the villains. And here on advanced, you have more villain configuration based on the 802.1Q. QoS, okay, so you can enable QoS and port based and also 802.1P DSCP based, okay? Pretty good. Rate limits, you can limit the ports. Let's say, for example, you want a port number one have only 512 kilobits per second, per second, you can enable here and it goes up to 512 megabits per second, okay? From kilobits to megabits. And here you can also have broad have broadcast filtering, filter the traffic with broadcast, you can just enable here. And finally, you have a help menu here that you can check dir directly with the Netgear website and read all the menus about the switch, okay? So it's a pretty simple switch. Basically, most of the time you use the switch just connecting to a camera or to a phone or something and power the device. And here you connect your computer or whatever you want to connect to. And usually, I don't connect computers here because it can damage the port. Of course, the switch senses that the port doesn't need power. It doesn't send power, but to be safe, I always connect computers on port from five to eight. In port one to four, I just connect uh, devices that need power such as cameras and uh, IP phones, for example, okay? Overall, it's a very good product. I like it a lot and I use for secured cameras. You can use it as well for your projects.